Want to have your clip featured in the Skyrim Clip of the Week? Simply record the clip on your Xbox and then send it to me via message. My gamertag is iRyanI, that's I-R-Y-E-N-I, and then you can message it to me over Xbox and I'll be able to view it. I look forward to seeing the clips that you guys send me. Now moving on to the video. Hey what's up guys, it's Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of Modded Monday. We're on week number 248 now guys. I've picked out 5 new mods for you guys to check out and perhaps add them to your load order if you find them interesting. But like always, before we jump into them, I want to remind you guys that I'm partnered with Gamersups, which in my opinion is the best energy drink on the market. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to check out the link in the description where you can go to their store page, and you can also use the code RTD for a 10% discount on all your purchases. I also want to say don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any brand new mods each and every single week. Now that all that's out of the way, we can jump into this week's mods. And starting us off, we have a new combat mod called TDG's Advanced Combat, and this is the Enhanced Edition. With this Advanced Combat Edition, it expands on the battle mechanics of Skyrim, causing combat to be more tactical and visceral. There's now new combo moves, which means that consecutive unblocked attacks do an additive 5% additional damage, decaying after 10 seconds. This means attacking once every second will allow you to deal up to 50% more attack damage to your enemies. You can also parry now, which means that clashing weapons now mitigate damage. It's not effective as blocking, but it's better than taking a full hit. You also have high blocking, which means that blocking is briefly 50% more powerful upon starting a block, but no more once every 2 seconds, and characters who strike a high block are stunned. These stuns obviously leave your enemy unable to attack you back for a while, and this gives you an attack of opportunity, which means they take even more damage. So if you have a fast swinging weapon where you can get a combo as well as the stunned attack, you could do so much extra damage to your enemies. But be careful because these enemies can also do that back to you, so who knows, you may run into combat with full health and get sliced up in a matter of seconds, so it's very very tactical and just makes combat all that more challenging. And whenever it comes to stuns, you can also stun an enemy by power attacking an opponent. In doing so, causes them to be out of the fight for a few seconds so you can get some extra hits in. But like I said, you can also have this done back to you so you can be stunned back if someone power attacks you, so you have to be careful. This mod is also very compatible with other combat mods that you may have installed, such as dodging mods and other combat overhauls, so why wouldn't you want a mod like this? I mean, it does make the game a lot more challenging. I know in these showcases here, I tend to use god mode, so you aren't watching me constantly die in some of these showcases, but it is very fun to use whenever you're actually going through a playthrough and actually, you know, clearing out a camp, because you can't just run through every enemy that you run up to. You actually have to plan out your attacks and actually have some strategy behind it instead of just brute forcing your way through everything. So if you're looking for a more challenging combat experience, I would strongly recommend downloading TDG's Advanced Combat The Enhanced Edition and giving it a try for yourself. Coming in at our number 4 spot, we have two mods that I'm going to be covering in one small showcase here, so technically I guess this is the top 6 mods of the week, but we have the Divine and Daedric Cloak mods. These are two separate mods, so you can have the Divine Cloaks if you just want the Divines, or the Daedric ones, and I'll also leave the links for them in the description separately as well. But these mods obviously add the Cloaks of the Divines as well as the Daedric Princes into the game. So if you have the Cloaks of Skyrim installed and you want just some more Cloaks to wear, you can install these. Or if you think the Cloaks of Skyrim mod is maybe too big because it is almost a 100 megabyte mod, you can then download some of these Cloaks and not have it take so much space in your list. But these mods, such as the Divine one, it adds a cloak for each of the 8 Divines, but Talus is also included. They also have Ariel now that's been requested to be added into this mod as well. And all of these versions come with both clean and tattered cloaks, and each cloak comes with its respective religious enchantment and can be crafted at the tanning rack. And whenever it comes to the Daedric cloaks, you have cloaks for each of the 17 Daedric Princes and one for Sithis, because why not? These aren't enchanted, but they can be and are also crafted at a tanning rack. And these are really nice, you know, there's not really much more you can say about them. I really like the designs on most of them, especially the Sher Gorath one. He has to be different in every single way, so of course he gets his own unique cape. And if I could say one of my favorite things about the Divine Cloaks mod here is that a lot of these cloaks come pre-enchanted, so you can actually have the enchantment for, you know, whether you're praying at a shrine 
shrine, you'll have that enchantment on your back for whatever type of god that you choose to worship. And also on top of that, if you're maybe doing a playthrough where you're using the Winter Sun Faith and Interactions bundle, or you're just doing some sort of religious playthrough where you're actually going around and praying to a bunch of shrines or just worshiping one god or, you know, any type of way that you play Skyrim in the religious way, you can actually have an extra enchantment for crafting that cape. And you'll just be able to have a small little upgrade on your character based on the divine that you pray to. As well as on top of that, you can also have the bonuses that you get for just worshiping the god in the first place with the Winter Sun mod. So there's so many new cloaks to try out and wear with this mod, and the mod space in total, I know I just added them both together, but if you are running extremely low on space, and you wanted to know the difference between Divine and Daedric, the Divine Cloaks is 22.44 megabytes, and the Daedric Cloaks is 35.92 megabytes. So if you were just going to download one of these mods, or maybe you just had a cloak in mind that you already saw in this showcase that you're going to throw on your character, then you could download them separately if you'd like, but I downloaded them both together because they pretty much are the same mod, they just kind of, you know, go off in their respective ways with the Divines and the Daedric Cloaks. So no matter your style or the gods you worship, there's a cloak here for everyone, and that's definitely why these mods are featured here at our number 4 spot, so I'd recommend downloading the Divine and Daedric Cloaks. Coming in at our number 3 spot, we have a mod that completely expands the saddles that you can put on your horses in Skyrim, and this is the Craftable Saddles from the Witcher 3 mod. And the mod page reads that this mod adds several models of saddles with different textures and saddle bags from the game Witcher 3, of course. And to equip horses with these saddles, you can craft them in the Blacksmith's Forge under the Leather section, and after that you can cast a built-in alteration spell called Elrian Horse Change Horse Outfit, and this spell is automatically added whenever you install the mod into your alteration spell tree, and you cast this on any unmounted horse. You can then choose a desired model from the open list, but this list only contains the models that you have currently crafted, and then you can click on it and wait a little bit for the new saddle to be applied. I will say that on the Xbox version of this it won't apply immediately, so you'll see in this showcase that once I cast the spell and change it to a different saddle, I quickly fast travel away and then fast travel back, and then the saddle will load onto the horse. I think this was a problem with SKSE not being on Xbox, and that's just one small incompatibility there, but it's not really that big of a problem, because once you cast the spell and change it to a new saddle, you just fast travel to a location that's extremely close, and after the loading screen is up, the horse now has the new saddle, so there isn't really that much of a, you know, hurdle that you have to jump through to get these saddles onto your horse. But there's so many new saddles to choose from in a bunch of different colors, and this also works with the Convenient Horses mod, which also changes horses entirely and adds way more saddles into the game as well. So if you wanted a complete customizable horse in Skyrim, I would strongly recommend downloading the Convenient Horses mod and then adding this mod on top of it, because there's so much customizable options that you have to actually have your horse look how you want it to look. And a lot of these saddles that you can pick and choose from also come with enchantments on it, such as extra carry weight with the ones with the saddle bags, so you can have your horse carry even more goods for you with the Convenient Horses mod. And if you guys are also wondering, the horse model that I have for this showcase here, it's called the Irish Cob Horse, the long-haired version, which I think is a very cool horse to add into the game and just looks a lot better than a lot of the vanilla horses in Skyrim. So I really like how compatible this is with other mods, especially the Convenient Horses mod, which is almost a must-have in almost all of my playthroughs that I do in Skyrim, just because of how much it completely expands horses and the mechanics that you have behind them, and just having even more customizable options whenever it comes to, you know, what type of saddle they're wearing, how much goods they can carry, and just how they handle themselves, this is a perfect mod to just throw on top of your list if you have enough space. So if you thought the saddles in the vanilla game of Skyrim were extremely lackluster and you're looking to add a bunch new into the game without downloading tons of different mods, then the craftable saddles from The Witcher 3 is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out, especially if you like The Witcher 3 and how the horses looked in that game, but even if you haven't played The Witcher and you really just like the way these look, which I do, I really like the way these look regardless if I've played The Witcher or not, then this is definitely a mod I'd recommend checking out, and that's definitely why it's featured here at our number 3 spot, so I strongly recommend downloading it and giving it a try for yourself. Coming in at our number 2 spot, we have a mod that's a work in progress but I think has so much potential to become really popular on Xbox, and this is the Animated Armory mod. This mod adds tons of new weapons that you can try out, and they're also very, very unique and have their own animations. Well, at least a lot of the animations are going to be planned for the future, because since this is a work in progress mod, not all of the animations are working correctly at the moment, so some still use the vanilla animations. But these are planned to have custom attack animations for both players and NPCs, and they also plan on making a smaller res version soon to reduce the file size. But this is only 100 megabytes, and it adds a bunch of new weapons, so it's not really that big of a file size to begin with. 
with. But they are planning on making a reduced file size version in the future, as well as adding an ultimate dodge mod patch and other patches soon. And whenever it comes to the new weapons that are added by this mod, we have the pike, the rapier, the quarterstaff, the claw, and the whip. And as you can tell later on whenever I'm showcasing me using some of these weapons, you'll see that the claw and the whip were obviously my favorite ones to use and are definitely the most fun to use with this mod because of just how different they are and how badass they look as well. And there's not just one of each different type of weapon, this is for every single category in the smithing tree. So you know you have an iron, a glass, a dwarven, a dragon bone, a daedric, for every single type of weapon that has been added with this mod. And this mod is also put into the leveled list so you'll be able to see NPCs carrying them instead of you just being the only owner of these weapons in Skyrim. So if you come across a person with a whip, I would run because the strength and the damage as well as the reach on that whip is extremely insane. You can whip people from extremely far away as well as the quarterstaff I think has a very long reach as well. Now I'm extremely excited for whenever the full version of this mod comes out, so go download this in the meantime and just try out some of these new weapons and see what you think, and show some support to the mod creator, because this is an absolutely amazing mod that adds tons of new weapons to try, and my favorite obviously being the claw and the whip like I said, because they're just really fun and different to go around and play with, and it's not really anything that we've seen in Skyrim before, especially the claws, I think the claws are extremely badass, and I can really tell that there was a lot of time and effort put into how a lot of these weapons look and their design because it's not just like if you have the dwarven claws they're not just yellow they're actually made of the dwarven metal you know the elven claws look extremely badass and such as the dragon bone whip has teeth as the whip instead of just a chain like the rest of them you know all of these designs are extremely well made and that's definitely why this mod's featured here at our number two spot this week so if you're looking to up your arsenal and add some new weapons into your list then the animated armory is definitely a mod i'd recommend checking out so go download it and use some of these new badass weapons for yourself Coming in at the number one spot this week, now I get some comments on my load order videos of people asking for a medieval take on Skyrim, or maybe just a medieval themed load order, and now I think that's entirely possible now, because now we have the Knights of Skyrim mod here. This is a mod that adds hundreds of armors to all the factions in the game, as well as many characters get their own unique armors as well. And in this mod, the Legion are now Black Knights and the Stormcloaks are the White Knights, and these armors are distributed to many NPCs in the game, but there's hundreds of more that can be found in the cheat room going to the QA smoke section, and you can definitely see this by this huge list that I'm scrolling down inside of the cheat room, all of these armors are actually found inside of one barrel here, so you can mix and match tons of different armors and look to your heart's content and be a true knight in Skyrim now. With all these armors combined, it definitely makes sense that it's 703.69 megabytes here because there's so much content to explore and actually try out with this mod. Like I said, there's tons of mix and matching that you can do for your character, but it's not just your character, it's also every other character in Skyrim. And whenever I said the Legion are Black Knights and the Stormcloaks are White Knights, they're not just all one armor set, every single Legion pretty much has its own separate type of armor that they're wearing or it's mix and match in a different way, so no one looks exactly the same. And same with the Stormcloaks, you walk into the Stormcloak camps, everyone has a different type of White Knight outfit on instead of all just having the same one on. And also all the NPCs that you walk around and just see in Skyrim will also have different types of armors that are just different mix and matched color sets and just, it just looks amazing. Amazing. I, I'm really at a loss for words with how great this looks, and if we actually end up making a medieval load order in the future, this is definitely going to be the armor mod that I choose for that. And this mod also covers all of the guards that are inside of every single hold in Skyrim, whether it be Windhelm, Whiterun, Riften, you name it, every single guard will now have new guard armors that reflect being a knight, and there's just no area that isn't touched with this mod, and I absolutely love it. A mod hasn't gotten me this excited to cover it in quite some time now, that just goes to show how much this mod brings to Skyrim and how much I really enjoy it, and I thought it was a brilliant idea for them to add all of the armors inside of a barrel in the testing hall that you can access using the cheat room, and also distributing them to the NPCs in the game that you can actually take if you're just doing a legit playthrough, but if you're doing a roleplay and you just want to have the armors from the get-go, you can get them from the cheat room, but I thought this was a great idea because if they implemented these all into the smithing station, I feel as though it would get extremely crowded in the craft 
crafting menu just because of the sheer size of armors that are you know featured with this mod there's hundreds upon hundreds the list takes a long time to scroll down if you actually open up the barrel and you scroll all the way down it takes a while to get to the bottom so there's so many new armors to try out and i'm very excited to cover it on this channel here and that's definitely why this mod's featured here at our number one spot this week so if you're building a medieval load order of your own or maybe you just want a more medieval take in your skyrim game then the knights of skyrim is definitely a mod i'd recommend checking out so go download it and become a true knight in skyrim for yourself so that's pretty much it for this week's episode of the top five skyrim mods of the week hopefully you guys did enjoy and if you did i'd appreciate it if you left a like and subscribe if you knew it really helps me out a lot and if you have any suggestions for mods you'd like me to cover in future top five mod episodes be sure to let me know in the comment section below or you can follow me on twitter i'll be sure to leave my twitter in the description and you guys can follow me on there and leave me suggestions there as well special shout out to my patreon supporters thank you guys so much for everything that you guys have done for me and yeah that's pretty much it hopefully you guys did enjoy and i will talk to you guys later.